Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And for this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this absolutely stunning birch bark cake with a few little tips and tricks, including some carving and some airbrushing and a technique on how to get those pesky little lines on the side of the bark that are so hard to get. This was for a wedding at work and I know birch trees have been around for a while, but I don't think they'll ever get old. So let's get right to it. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I prep one tier but just know that I do the same thing for all of the tiers. I level them all and simple syrup them. And now I'm filling the top tier. This one is a white almond vanilla with a fresh strawberry filling. And I make sure that I do a really good thick dam when I'm doing a fruit filling because you don't want it to ooze out. And as soon as you get that thick dam on there and smooth down, pop it in the freezer right away for about a good half hour so it is nice and firm for when you're doing your crumb coat and your final coat. And this right here is the crumb coat. And that is what's going to trap in the crumbs for your final coat. Stick it in the freezer again till it firms up about 20 minutes. And this is how I am doing the top because I wanted that top middle cut part to be a little darker. It's a little bit of ivory to the buttercream. And um, since this is more of a clean birch look, not a real rustic one, I wanted to make sure that I get this top really smooth and uh, as perfect as I can. So I just did the top first and I'm just pulling that buttercream into the middle, just smoothing that. And then I put a piece of parchment on it and turned it upside down. And now I am doing the final coat of the white American buttercream on the outside. Now I did pop it in the freezer for about 10 minutes before I turned it upside down. I forgot to say that. And once I get this all smoothed, I'm gonna pop it back into the freezer for another 20 minutes, bring it out and cut off that extra off of the bottom. And now you turn it upside, right side up. And I'm just kind of smoothing out that bottom. And then I just used circle cutters to mark the rings of the tree. This is just kind of marking where I want them to be. I'm gonna emphasize them with the airbrush. That last ring, I didn't have a cutter big enough, so I just used my Dresden tool, turned the, um, the turntable, and marked it that way. And then on the top tier, you're gonna see the middle. The other tiers you're not gonna see so much, so don't worry about that so much, about getting the rings all the way to the middle. But the top tier, you're gonna see the top. And these are clay sculpting tools that I'm using to to carve out where an aged block of wood or a ring of wood would kind of split as it dries. So it's almost like a, a cross, you know, like a star pattern, but uneven. And then do a few other ones outside of that. Just kind of keep it random because in nature, nothing is even, right? So it's okay if it's a little bit uneven. Then I just used a fluffy brush to brush away the excess. Since this tear is nice and chilled, um, it's easy to brush that away without affecting the look of the rest of the tier. And I wanted to add some crevices and cracks on the sides, like around the edge and on the bottom, just to make them look a little bit more aged. And I'm still using those clay sculpting tools, trying to keep it more wide at the corner and then taper down towards the side of the, you know, as it goes down the cake and towards the middle. Chill it again. And I'm gonna show you with this middle tier, they wanted a heart with their initials. So I'm gonna show you how I did that on the middle tier. Same thing, just kind of marked it out with a heart cutter. That's just a cookie cutter. And then used my the clay sculpting tool, tools to carve it out. Now, don't be afraid to leave this more rustic because obviously that's how they're gonna be. Even though it's a more clean birch bark tree, the initials needed to be more rustic. And I did this carving out on all three tiers. Now I'm gonna mix my airbrush color. I used brown and some white, mostly white with a touch of brown. And most of that ended up on my turntable. <laughs> it just flew out, I don't know, it came out fast. Airbrush color is definitely thinner than gel color. So I just mixed enough to get the depth that I wanted. Now remember with airbrush color, it's going to deepen as it oxidizes. So if it's a little lighter to begin with, that's okay. And I'm showing you this middle tier because I was experimenting on the middle tier. I don't think I showed you the top tier on how to do the rings. Not as good as this anyways. Um, I don't think the angle of the camera was right. We'll see in a second here. 
So I just use the airbrush on, turn the nozzle down till you have a finer jet of, of color. Don't leave it on, you know, the wide setting where it's gonna mist all over you because you're using this to define your small details. So I did that on the top and then I am just getting into the crevices of all of them. Aiming towards the center and not minding so much if it goes out of the center a little bit, that's okay. Because we're gonna go back a couple times till we get the color the way that we want it. Like I said, it's going to oxidize, so I always try to keep that in mind because I don't want it to go too dark right away. You can always add color, it's harder to remove it. I guess you do get to see me doing the top tier here. And then I used a fine tip brush with just the straight brown airbrush color into the cracks. Again, just adding another layer, another depth of color in there. Airbrush coloring and color on cakes is a lot about layering. Adding some, adding some more if you need it, adding a second color if it's going to enhance it. And don't mind some shadows, some shadowing is fine too. And then I wanted the outside ring of this birch bark tree to be pretty dark. So I was just aiming it right at the outside edge. And I know it bled down the side a little bit, but I was fine with that because like I said, shadowing. I like to shadow when I do the airbrush. So it's fine. I did all this before I did the marks. And this is how I'm doing it now. I, if you're a little bit more old school with, with cake decorating and you have all the Wilton supplies, you'll know what this is. This is a marker for the sides of a cake. If you need to do swags or anything like that, you need to mark your cake, you use this tool. Those little prongs that stick out are adjustable. But what I'm doing is just dipping it into my airbrush color, just the straight brown. And then I'm just kind of lightly scraping, holding it at like a 45 degree angle around the sides and adjusting the height of the, of the marker so that you get um, the marks in different places. And I do go back and add some more to this tier. I decided with the next one that I liked it a little bit with a few more extra marks. And then I'm just taking that small brush. It's a, like a really small um, fluffy brush. And I'm just kind of, um, what's the word? I'm just softening some of the lines to make them look a little bit more like those knots so that not all of the lines are exactly the same. And I'm just kind of dabbing on that outside edge too. I wanted to rust it up a little bit, rustic it up a little bit which that probably wasn't necessary once I was done. It's one of those things where I did it on one tier and I thought, well, I better do it on the rest of them too, even though you can't really even tell, just to make sure I do the same thing on all of them. <laughs> Nobody would ever know. And then here I'm doing the top tier. Here I'm showing you how I'm doing more. And I kind of changed my angle. I'd go from the right to the left and then from the left to the right and make sure that your cakes are nice and chilled because you don't want to gouge them up too much. It would be easy to dig right into the cake if it's not chilled. And that's fine for some texture, but your color is gonna get kind of lost in the, um, in the messiness of the gouged buttercream. And that was not the look I was going for. Now here I'm showing you how I am stacking. I had cut all my dowels to the same height. There's five, eight of them, I believe. I'll cut to the same height, push down, and then since these cakes are painted, I can't just pick them up with my hands. So they are put in the refrigerator or freezer for, for about 20 minutes. I put that sharpened dowel through it and then lifted it up from the board underneath. As you can see, I'm doing right here. And that way you avoid touching it. You avoid touching it all together. And then I just pounded that dowel straight through all of them. And now the fun finishing touches of the airbrushing. Once I have it assembled, I went ahead and used the, um, did I use, I think I used the diff diffused color. The, um, I think I had a little bit more brown than I did originally, but there's still a little white in there to uh, emphasize where the tiers meet, tops and bottoms. And just make sure that, I don't know how to describe it, but where the cracks are, like on the top, see how it's, the shadow kind of fans out? I think that makes it a little bit more natural. So that's another thing I'm going in and doing there. And then once I stepped back and looked at it, I thought it's a little bit too, too tan, too ivory. So I just used some of the straight white airbrush color and aimed for the middle of the tier. You know, kind of gradiated it out a little bit. Like if I had any darker spots, I kind of 
um, focused on those from when I had done the airbrush down on the top edge. And if it was a little too dark, I went ahead and did that. And this is how, look how slow my hand moves. This is how I decorated it since I didn't know what flowers they were going to have at the venue and I wasn't delivering it. So I needed to go ahead and figure out something that I could stick into the cake that I could take back out. And they wouldn't even notice I had done that for um, pictures and for showing you a finished product. So I just wrapped these uh, twigs and stems in um, kind of dried, I don't know what those are called, those fluffy ones, around a toothpick. So the only thing that's poking into the cake is just that toothpick. And then I used some more uh, artificial, like dried flowers to uh, hide where that toothpick is. I almost lost my train of thought there. <laughs> so I put those on the front to hide the toothpick and the floral tape. And then I had these, I don't know what those are called either. They're kind of like pine cones, but not um, in front of those and in the back. So you got three different heights of decorations. And I'm really glad I added those. Um, honestly, I thought I did see the pictures of the cake after it had been delivered and it was gorgeous, but I really like these um, more of twigs. I think that that, that kind of goes really well with the whole thing. So there it is all done, guys. I know, like I said, that these have been around for a while, but I have yet to find a really good tutorial on how to decorate these these birch bark cakes. And I hope that if you've had that problem, that this helped you also. And I hope you learned something. And like and subscribe, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.